Hello and welcome back my friends. Do you want to buy your first printer or maybe your next one? Then this video may give you some information which will help you to make your decision for which one to choose the next time. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on that later. Be it your hobbyist who wants to improve his home and workshop with 3D printed tools, decorations and useful parts, or you play Dungeons and Dragons or Warhammer and want to print your own figures to play with, or as an artist wanting to bring your sculpting ideas to life, there's for sure a 3D printer out there that will do it for you. When I did my research on the video, I stumbled across some information about especially SLA printing, which scared the hell out of me. But after digging deeper into the topic, I'm now confident that I can use it in a way which is safe for me and my loved ones. Let's get started. <music> 3D printers for consumers fall into two main categories, FDM printers and SLA printers. Fused Deposition Modeling, FDM, also known as Fused Filament Fabrication, FFF, is the most widely used type of 3D printing at the consumer level. They work by melting thermoplastic filaments such as PLA, PTG or ABS and extruding it through a heated nozzle, following a path to apply it layer by layer to a build platform, one on top of the other until the part is complete. SLA 3D printers took longer to be available for consumers, though it was the first 3D printing technology invented in the 1980s. Industrial SLA 3D printers use a laser to cure liquid resin into hardened plastic or welding metal powder to create the parts. The printers we can buy for the desktop today use LCD screens and UV light instead, making them cheaper to produce and safer to use in our workshops. Unlike FDM printers, they print a complete layer in one step, then they next and so on. This makes them often print faster than FDM printers. Let's start with FDM printers. The majority of 3D printers are cation printers, the so-called bed slingers like the Peugeot i3s and all of its clones, many cube-shaped printers like the Illigo Neptune X and the Creality N5 Pro belong to that category. Then we have the Delta printers, like the Sun QQS Pro or the Monoprice Mini Delta V2. Though they are Cartesian printers as well, they make a distinct category because of their unique design. They look very impressive because of their height and three moving arms when at work. There are some more types of FDM 3D printers, like CoreXY, Belt, Polar, and Scara 3D printers, but they are very expensive, specialized or all of that, so I won't cover them here. The other 3D printing technology is SLA printers. It's time for a short ad from this video sponsor, which is PCBWay. PCBWay is not only a manufacturer of high industry grade PCBs, they also offer a professional 3D printing service where you can choose from various 3D printing technologies and materials to realize your projects and give them a professional touch, making it your one-stop manufacturer regardless if you're a DIY maker, a growing startup or a settled company. The consumer models mainly use the LCD approach. The main difference between the available models is their build volume, which is in most cases much smaller than FDM printers and the higher final resolution of the prints they can produce. There are a number of questions you should answer yourself when choosing your first or next 3D printer. Your budget might be the most limiting factor when choosing a 3D printer. The good news is, you can start with 3D printing at a cost as low as 150 US dollars. Though the bigger your budget, the more choice you have. Don't forget that you also need some filament or resin to start printing with as well. When you get an SLA 3D printer, you also want to buy a curing and washing machine additionally, so it's much easier for you to clean your models and cure the uncured resin afterwards. You will also need a lot of paper towels, a spray bottle, a filter to filter the resin and a huge amount of IPA to clean your prints. Furthermore, make sure to get an appropriate personal protection equipment to keep you safe and healthy while working with a liquid resin. To protect your hands from getting into contact with the resin, you need nitrile gloves. Don't use latex gloves. 
Since you need lots of them, you may consider to get reusable ones to protect the environment. Next, get a very good respirator, which is capable of filtering out not only the odor from the resin, but also the toxic gases which come of it. Eye protection is worth thinking of as well, because getting resin into your eyes could even blind you. Finally, a painter's suit ensures that you don't contaminate your clothes with resin. If you follow the safety precautions mentioned, then SLA printing can be just as much fun as FDM printing without endangering your health, although FDM printing requires much less if If you like the video so far, please don't forget to boop the like button, subscribe to my channel to help me and the YouTube algorithm to get the video spread out more, and also write down your comments in the comment section below. I will read and answer them all. 3D printing consumes energy, you need materials to print with, and parts of your 3D printer can suffer from wear or failure. The first two depend heavily on how much and how big you print, the latter one hopefully never won't happen. In case it does, you want to have some spare parts lying around like nozzles, belts or heaters, or at least a source where you can order them with a short delivery time. This is a quick overview of the costs you should expect when starting with 3D printing. Especially when starting with 3D printing, you often run into problems, your prints may fail or not look like expected, and you have no clue what the reason is. Is there an active community supporting your 3D printer's brand? Then right jump into one of the communities on Facebook or Reddit, and I'm sure you will get help there very soon. Even if you only plan to print models from platforms like Thingiverse, Thanks or Printables, there's one piece of software you should get comfortable using it, the slicer. There's a good choice of free slicers and also some paid ones, often with a limited functions free version, but the free ones do their job exceptionally well. Just to mention some of them, starting with slicers mostly for FDM printers, Rouge Slicer. You might guess, this is a free version of the slicer originally developed for Prusa's own printers, but it's open to any other 3D printer brand. It even provides a constantly growing list of already customized profiles for popular 3D printers. Ultimaker Cura. This slicer is very popular too. It supports the professional Ultimaker FDM printers best, but like the Prusa slicer, it offers profiles for many other printers too. Idea Maker. This slicer has some interesting features. You can apply textures to your 3D models, which gives them a pretty structure when printed. It also has some functions to create 3D models directly in the slicer, which in my opinion should be better left to CAD and modeling programs. Lishi slicer is also free, supporting most 3D printers on the market. What it makes stand out is the fact that it also supports SLA 3D printers. The choice of slicers for SLA printers is somewhat more limited. Your best bet is to use the slicer provided with your 3D printer. In many cases, this will be key to box in its limited free version. There is a yearly subscription pro version 2, but I doubt it's worth the money. The problem with printers using key to box is that they are bound to the encrypted CTB file format the software produces, making it hard to use an alternative. Any cubic printers come with any cubic photon workshop slicer. As far as I know, it works only with any cubic SLA printers. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Lishi Slicer, as already mentioned before, supports almost any 3D printer on the market, including hundreds of SLA printers. It also can export sliced 3D models in the required format of the chosen 3D printer. Besides that, it provides all needed to place the model, add supports and change print settings. Finally, using a workaround, you could also use the Prusa slicer to slice for your Heatobox 3D printer, getting all the benefits of placing supports and doing other things, which are only available in the pro version of Heatobox. You then still have to use Heatobox to export the Prusa sliced file into the CTB format. Cut and modeling. If you want to go further than just printing prefabricated models by others, then you will, for better or worse, have to get to grips with CAD and modeling software. For functional parts, parametric CAD programs are a good choice. There are open source and free commercial programs to choose from. The latter comes with some restrictions but are the most professional solutions. Fusion 360 from AutoCAD let you use the CAD software that professionals are using in the industry. It comes with some limitations, 
like you having to renew the free trial every year, only having 10 editable models at a time, and some functions only available when buying tokens. Though that's only necessary if you want professional 3D renderings or cloud-based calculations. Solid Edge, on the other hand, comes with a totally free community edition. I'm not aware of any restrictions so far. Besides parametric design, it offers an interesting alternative. Synchronous modeling. It's absolutely worth taking a look at. In the open source world, the contenders are FreeCAD, OpenSCAD and Blender. FreeCAD is a very powerful parametric modeling software. Besides its main purpose, it can be extended with additional add-ons, for example to create lithophanes or to do finite element analysis of models. OpenSCAD uses a totally different approach to any of the before mentioned programs. Though having a graphical user interface, you can't construct objects using your mouse. Instead, it uses a programming language like approach where you can define variables, functions and modules. These can then be combined to create the final model. Using the variables, it's easy to try out variations of your design quickly. It's perfect if you use mathematical formulas to define the shape, repetition or size of parts. Blender is most known for its sculpting capabilities, amazing 3D renders and also awesome animations made with it. It's hard to get used to it, but it's the best you can get when you want to model organic forms like creatures. Blender can be extended with additional plugins too, even broadening its usefulness. One of the latest and still in development is CatSketcher, a plugin enabling parametric design with Blender. If you're like me and love to tinker around with your 3D printer and try out modifications, then FDM printers are the way to go for you. FDM printers offer so many opportunities, trying out modifications and see if they make your printing experience better. But be warned, just do one modification at a time and make sure you can revert it. When tinkering with FDM printers, it's always a good idea to have at least one working 3D printer so you have a fallback in case anything goes wrong with your modification. If you like the video, please help me and the YouTube algorithm to spread it out to more people by liking it, subscribing my channel and sharing the video with your friends. I'd really appreciate if you do that. This was the last video in 2022 and I wish you all a happy new year and hope to see you again next year when I'm getting back with new cool videos for beginners and for enthusiasts. See you then, yours 3D Printing Geek.